In our next clip, Dr. Michael Ruscio discusses how gut interventions to address dysbiosis can improve the absorption of nutrients and medications that help regulate and rebalance thyroid hormones. I want to focus on the microbiome because, of course, in functional medicine, we love to talk about the microbiome. And you've done <laughs> some compelling work that highlights this connection between the gut microbiome and thyroid health. And you've dubbed this term nutrient GI thyroid axis. Will you will you unpack that for us a little bit? Tell us what that connection looks like. Yeah. I mean, some of the, the broad strokes there are in those who do have Hashimoto's. Estimates vary, but it's between 20 to 40% of those individuals will have a deficiency of either intrinsic factor, HCL, or both. So they're at risk to be iron anemic or B vitamin, B12, not uh, the only one, but they, they may be a number of B vitamin insufficient due to low ionization of the minerals and the vitamins. So that's one in, in terms of someone might be fatigued because of low ferritin or low B12. Maybe a lot of the people that we work with aren't because I'm assuming they're on multivitamins and B vitamins because they're just so proactive, but it's certainly something to be attentive to, especially depending on your population. Like our population is, they're just so well-read and, and so proactive that they're usually on a number of vitamins already. But that is one important factor. Another regards to thyroid conversion and autoimmunity, like we discussed earlier, vitamin D, selenium, and myo-inositol. And those aren't necessarily broadly deficient, but they have been documented to help lower antibodies and improve conversion of, of T4 to T3. The other is iodine. There was one study, and I think this has been replicated by others, that found long-term adherence to a paleo diet actually did pose a risk of iodine insufficiency. So it's not something that I think is on the population level, but if someone's been on a restrictive diet for a long period of time, thinking about the paleo diet, cutting out some of the main foods that are fortified with iodine, which would be iodized salt, dairy, and grains, then inadvertently these people might be eating their way into iodine insufficiency. So it's just something to maybe have them use a iodized salt uh, and there, there's even, I believe, a iodized sea salt out there where, you know, the iodine has been added back. Um, and then gastrointestinal absorption, right? The other thing that happens in some of these cases is they're not absorbing nutrients well. So wrapped in with the IBS, the SIBO, whatever it is, especially if it's chronic diarrheal type, they're just not able to extract adequate nutrition from their food. And that's where some of the, let's say, fatigue depression, thinning hair, and dry skin is coming from. It's not thyroid, but it's nutrient deficiency. Yeah, the gut health seems to be pretty high yield. And my last question about it is, let's say someone is, they're already on thyroid hormone replacement. They come to see you. You start doing some of this gut restoration. Do you, are you, are you able to lower their dose or take them off their medication at some point once the gut health has been restored? Absolutely. Yeah. And for some people, actually, they will express signs of being over-medicated because their absorption improves. So definitely. And it's an important thing to just keep an eye on if someone does have frank gastrointestinal symptoms and they're on hormones, they may start having palpitations, insomnia, feeling hot, which could indicate that, you know, again, they're overly absorb, or I guess they're correctly absorbing the thyroid hormone. Um, and coming back to that meta-analysis, because this is a common patient question, well, what, I've been on hormone for five years, 10 years. Does that mean my gland is kind of wrecked and I can never get off of it? This study looked at these factors and length of time someone was on hormone did not predict their ability to come off. So it was really reassuring. But what did was at time of diagnosis, TPO levels and TSH levels. So that's something else you can do if, if you can get that data from before they started on hormone, what, what diagnosed them, then that can be used as a prognostic indicator of if they'll be able to come off the thyroid hormone or not, or at least reduce their dose.